this is Veronica with Once Upon a Homeschooler. I'm here today to do another video review, this time of the Topps Learning System, book number 32, Electricity. This is found in the Su Sunlight Science E program, um, and it's scheduled out for you there, but I just wanted to show you the book, and I wanted to show you kind of how to use the book, because the first time I saw these books, they were kind of confusing, so I'll probably do a few video reviews on a couple of the different books. Um, this one here is kind of unique because of the copyright situation. You basically um, have a freedom to make as many copies of as many pages in this book as you want to for your own use. If you are selling a book to somebody else, um, they request that you send about 25 cents per home for homeschoolers per lesson. So that would be about $5 for this book. I think there's about 20 lessons in it. And um, so they request that you send that in. You can send in more donations if you want because they're a really good company and they do work mainly off of donations. These books are fairly cheap for the amount of activities they have in them. They work hard to make, keep them cheap and basically that's pretty much it on the copyright. I like it because you can make copies of any pages that you need to. Here is a list of all the activities. The first couple of pages are basically just instructions for the teacher. Um, you just read through this really quick and it just basically tells you there's instructions for classroom teachers and homeschool teachers and then tells you how to get ready the things that you want to do to get ready pages you want to print off um, things that you need here on um, this page here is a list of everything you will need for the entire program they're divided into q1 q2 and q3 q1 is your usual homeschool situation it's enough for one student or or one pair of students to do the activity. This is how many of each thing you'll need on this first number here. Q2, or the second number, will tell you if you have 30 students in pairs of 15 pairs, how much you'll need if they're each doing it at their own pace, because some of the things you don't need to get the total amount of like pennies. If they're using pennies, they can use up the pennies in one group first, and then they can pass them on to the next group, and so on and so forth. And then the last number is if you're, you have a group of 30 students and they're all doing it at the same time, and of course, some things you only need one of, like one roll of masking tape for the entire class or whatever. But basically, you're going to be going by the numbers on this side. And most of the things will be in your science activity kit. Um, once in a while, there's some things that aren't, but like uh, always on the some like schedules. And they'll tell you a week ahead of time the things that you need to get from the store. So they're pretty basic. Um, and they try to use as many things that you can find cheaply or around the home as they, you can. And they, I like that they tell you everything that you're going to need up front. Um, and they tell you how many you'll need. So that way if you don't need to worry about getting so many, if you just have one student or one or two students doing it at home. On the next page is kind of a schedule. It's, this one's written as a tree. Sometimes they write it as an actual schedule. And this schedule, I didn't know what it was at first when I looked at it. But basically it's saying that your first activity is going to be your base. Activities two and three are kind of kind of branch off and work together. Four and five are kind of branch together. Six and seven. And then you're going to make another base out of eight and nine. And then 10, 11, 12, 13 are going to work together. And then 19 and 20 will come back and work off of those two. But you're going to take a break and do 14, 15, 16. And then 17, 18 over here and come back and finish them up. So you'll do 20 activities overall. There's a lot of background noise. I try hard to do this at the quietest time of day, but I have really noisy neighbors and the walls are cement, so everything echoes. Um, so it's really noisy, but I'm trying to get rid of as much as I can. Um, so anyways, this is just some more information about the activities. This here is your tests. I never do the tests. I don't like doing tests. This is your review of your tests. You can um, copy these out or whatever you want, but basically after activity one, you have them draw away to light a bulb with a dry cell and another one that draw another way that doesn't work. And you'll be doing a lot of this on the worksheets already, so I don't really see a need for all these extra questions over here. Um, and then there's the next page is some more review and questions. Then we come over here to your objective. This is what their book is going to be trying to teach. And again, here's another thing about the copyright information. One book, one teacher. So you can use as much as you want for one teacher, but when you switch teachers, you should be paying them for the extras so that way you don't, they, they don't lose too much money off of the sale. Um, and then here we have a worksheet. These worksheets, basically you're supposed to print this out and it has everything for your child to do this activity by themselves. Okay, this is their worksheet. 
you they're gonna set a number one they're gonna take some aluminum foil and some tape and they're gonna tape it down cut around the foil make it look just right and that's pretty much step-by-step -step instructions they're gonna take a dry cell also known as a battery and um they're gonna find a way to light up the bulb and they're gonna draw it in the first box in a way that doesn't so if you go back to the test page it was pretty much the same question draw a way that does work and doesn't so it's not really a whole lot of sense to um do it over again and then of course they're going to label it with their name because in case you're doing it with a large classroom you don't want people fighting over whose work it was and then this page over here is your page this page is going to be telling you what the objective is it's going to tell you the notes so that way if somebody's making a mistake how to fix it what happens if they do it wrong um how you can help them with it things that younger students might be frustrated with um what the answers should look like and then on the bottom there's a list of all of the things that you'll need for this particular lesson so basically it just tells you exactly what you need then you come to the next page here's another student worksheet i like to print off all these student worksheets and then put them into one of those folders they hole punch them and put them in one of those folders that hold hole punch things and um basically just use it like that and then they can do their just open up their page for the day and just do the activity really quick and this one basically what they're going to be doing is just finding a way to take a battery and a piece of wire and a light bulb and they're just going to keep finding more ways that work and more ways that don't okay and here's the activities here's the answers the, um, the different things that you need to know about it and of course the activities you're going to be using for this one and I'm just going to skip ahead here. It's basically going to be the same thing over and over again. So I'm just going to skip ahead to a little bit harder one. Let's see. I'm going to skip here. A flash experiment. So basically what you have here is two different batteries hooked up into a little train. And you got the foil heading off to the straight pin. And you gently piece of put some um, steel wool on the index card. And slide it in there and see if you can get it to light up with and what happens if you use steel, steel wool fibers instead of an actual wire and then you find out what happens when the electricity passes through thin strands what happens when it passes through thick strands what happens when it passes through the ribbon what's the difference and basically that type of thing so they're finding out does it make a difference how thin the wire is how thick the wire is does it make a difference if the wire is completely connected or not completely connected that type of thing. Um, here's another activity here. You're going to build a fuse. And so you're going to get some index cards. You're going to get some steel wool. And you're going to get some pennies. Clip them on to the card. You're going to get some your um, dry cells with the batteries and your ribbons that you made with um, tin foil and all that stuff. And you're basically going to see what happens when you shorten the gap what happens when you do different things what happens when the wires get hot and so for, so on and so forth so they can see what will happen and of course the answers are over here to see um, what makes the bulb shine brightly what makes the bulb short out um, different things that happen so it's just different activities so they can see not only how does electricity work but what happens when you mess it up what happens if you do it correctly um, is there a way to do it more correctly than a different correct way? Things like that. So it's just basic, simple experiments, different ways of trying out things on their own and just seeing what happens. So they're pretty easy to use, pretty fast to do. A lot of kids especially like the electricity one. So if you have any questions, I think that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. And thank you and have a blessed day.